Assalamu alaikum, we are going to talk about uh, CLAPSI surveillance. Uh, as you see, the patient safety components include procedure associated module, device associated modules, and other modules. The, the, for the device associated modules, we have CLAPSI, VAB, VAE, CAUTI, and dialysis events. So our focus today is about CLAPSI. CLAPSI is very important uh, healthy care associated infection. It is associated with um, uh, increased hospital stay, uh, increased morbidity, uh, and increased mortality, and the attributable mortality, which is the excess mortality due to the presence of CLAPSI, is between 15 and 20%. Uh, and as a result of increased the hospital stay, there is increase in the cost, and one of the most costly HAI is CLAPSI. So CLAPSI may not be the most prevalent HAI, but it's definitely one of the most costly HAI. As you see, CLAPSI represents 11% of the total HAI uh, burden, but as I said before, it is associated with a lot of morbidity, mortality, cost, and length of stay, uh, and it is one of the um, of the HAI that preventive measure uh, make a good impact or reduction in the rate in, in the U.S. Uh, so it is one of the examples that prevention can reduce the um, the burden of uh, CLAPSI or BSI. What is the definition of CLAPSI? CLAPSI means BSI plus catheter so or central line. So the CLAPSI is defined as a primary bloodstream infection, lab confirmed, plus the presence of central line. And for the central line, it has to be uh, in place for more than two days and present on uh, and is still in place on the date of event or the day before. And when we say central line, it includes the central line or umbilical catheter. For the date of event, um, it is the first element to be used for meeting the criteria. So if the criteria has two elements or three elements, so the first element will be the date of event. For the central line, it's any intravascular catheter that terminate or at or close to the heart so it it terminates near the heart or inside the heart or it's one or in one of the great vessels uh, which is used to uh, for so the central line is used for infusion withdrawal of blood or hemodynamic monitoring if the catheter is not used for any of these three it's not called central line the following are considered great vessels for the purpose of the definition of central line in CLAPSI. These include the big vessels, aorta, pulmonary artery, superior vena cava, inferior vena cava, uh, brachiocephalic, internal jugular, subclavian, external iliac, inferior vena cava, common femoral, and inunates the umbilical uh, artery or vein or vein. Uh, and this is a photo that describes the great vessels of the heart, as you see, the subclavian internal jugular, the most common one used in adults, and also the femoral, which is uh, the most common one used in children. These are the types of central line. As you see, we have temporary, which is a central line is not tunneled, and permanent, and include tunneled catheters or, un or implanted catheters, and umbilical or umbilical catheter, which is the central vascular device inserted through the umbilical artery or vein in units. These are more details about the types of central lines. The first one is non-tunneled catheters, travels directly from the skin uh, entry site to the vein uh, and is used for short-term uh, therapy. For the tunnel or uh, permanent catheter, it travels a distance under the skin from the point of insertion before terminating into the heart or its big vessels. Uh, the best example for this is Hickman or Brovia catheters, and this helps stabilize them, making them 
used for long term therapy so for longer duration sometimes month they can uh, have only uh, one or more lumen or can have one or more lumen multi lumens like two lumens three lumen other types include implanted boards and these are boards uh, that are also called the tunnel uh, under the skin uh, so it's covered under the skin uh, and it's not much used currently the peripherally inserted central catheter or back line is inserted into one of the large peripheral veins such as the cephalic or basalic uh, vein uh, and then advance it until uh, the tip uh, rests on the distal superior vena cava or the cavoatrial junction near the heart This slide, the next few slides, give you the advantage and disadvantage of each type of uh, central line, uh, starting from the non-tunnel uh, central venous catheter or uh, the temporary catheter, uh, which enter the skin uh, directly into the heart or the big vessels. Um, the other type is the tunnel which travel under the skin before entering the heart or the big vessels. Again, we will not go through the details, but it is for those who wants to more to know more about the central line can read the details in these slides. Also the big line or peripheral inserted uh, central catheter, uh, peripheral ca uh, inserted central catheter. Uh, again, this is uh, inserted into one of the arm vessels and, and, and proceed until rest near the heart. The implanted board, and as we said, it's covered by the skin and then travel under the skin to reach the uh, great vessels. And again, this is uh, much less used currently due to the risk of infection. Uh, we just said in a previous slide that the central line function should be infusion uh, withdrawal and hemodynamic monitoring. So these are the function that make central line is a central line. So neither the location of the insertion, jugular, internal jugular, subclavian, cephalic, nor the type of the device, tunnel or not tunnel, may be used to determine if a line qualify as a central line. The device must terminate in one of the big vessels or near the heart to be qualify, qualified as a central line. Uh, therefore, pacemaker wires and other non-tunnel device which are not used in infusion, withdrawal, hemodynamic monitoring, monitoring inserted into the central blood vessels of the heart are not considered central line because fluids are not infused, pushed, nor withdrawn from these devices. So the, the mere presence of a device like a line, a wire or uh, a tube, uh, not tunnel, the tu non lumen the tube, uh, not used in infusion and in withdrawal or uh, hemodynamic monitoring, does not qualify to be a central line. And this is a list of devices that are not considered central line. We will not go through them, uh, but just uh, as uh, uh, like um, enumeration, uh, arterial catheter, arteriovenous fistula, arteriovenous graft, ECMO, HIP, HERO, uh, and then access to cent central line, peripheral IV or midline, uh, ventricular assisted device or VAD. Uh, these are not central line because again, they, they are not function as central line as we said, uh, infusion, withdrawal, and hemodynamic monitoring. Uh, when counting the central line days, if the patient has more than one central line, he, he, he does not have one more than one central uh, central line day. So uh, the patient who has one central line or more than one central line, it is still one central line day. But if, in some locations, like uh, specialty care area, we are required to differentiate between temporary and permanent central line. And in this situation, you have to put the uh, central line day under one of the both category, temporary or permanent. And if you have two central line, one is temporary and one is permanent. So you choose the temporary because we always choose 
the higher risk uh, device so you you don't count it twice you count it once and you choose the one type that are more risky if an infant has both umbilical catheter and an umbilical catheter count it as umbilical catheter again uh, one counting no double counting and usually and, and always use the more risky device uh, for the surveillance methodology for CLEPSI, it is an active surveillance patient based prospective, priority directed or targeted, and finally yield risk adjusted incidence rate. Uh, just a, a, a note about what, what, what is the meaning of each word of this. Active means that you are actively looking for new events. So you go to the unit you review the patient charts to get the information and you are not just sitting which is the passive surveillance you are sitting in your office waiting for a phone call about a new event which may be reported to you and may not so you actively looking during the duration of surveillance for the event patient based means it's not only lab based because the earlier surveillance was looking only for positive blood culture and consider any positive blood culture as central line uh, associated bloodstream infection and this is wrong because you will see in the definition that just the presence of positive blood culture may not be enough to diagnose uh, uh, CLEPSI that's why we need more information about the patient symptoms and other criteria that help us determine if this is CLEPSI or not prospective means that you're looking forward uh, for the event while the patient is still in the hospital so you cannot do the CLEPSI surveillance uh, backward for example you cannot ask me uh, to do April surveillance while now we are in July you have to start the July surveillance in July uh, priority directed uh, or targeted means that we cannot cover all the locations in the hospital as you know we create the CLEPSI rate through uh, uh, stratified by the location and so we have to have risk assessment plan before the beginning of the year to determine which areas and how long duration we are uh, going to do the surveillance this is called the priority directed priority means the more uh, risk assessment uh, points that they get then this is the more prior uh, have a more priority than other location we cannot cover all the locations so we cover only the high risk location or the ones that are we are more interested in doing based on the risk assessment uh, uh, points uh, the final thing is yield risk adjusted incidence rates so it's not crude rates crude rates it's the number of events over the number of patients uh, some something like that uh, total number of events over the total number of patients but we are doing here over uh, 1000 central line days to adjust for the duration any stay which is the major risk factor for uh, for the development of CLEPSI additionally uh, we are doing the rate stratified by different locations we are not mixing neonatal ICU rate with adult ICU rate with different types of adult ICU rate like cardiac ICU medical ICU medical surgical ICU and so on so this stratification plus the adjustment to the central line days is called yield uh, risk adjusted incidence rate so when we compare we compare apple with apple orange with orange not a mixed fruit a comparison for the surveillance location uh, in CLEPSI, we can do surveillance of CLEPSI in any location that is inpatient, including uh, ICUs, adult ICUs, uh, neonatal ICUs, a specialty care area. Uh, and with the specialty care area, we usually focus on hematology, oncology uh, units, long-term care units, uh, dialysis units, and um, orga uh, solid organ transplant units. Um, other inpatient location means the ward so uh, different types of wards so we are doing surveillance literally in every location of inpatient in the hospital the only location that we cannot do uh, uh, collapse is locations uh, where uh, the patient is not residing overnight uh, including the ER and uh, uh, the uh, outpatient clinic 
remember that dialysis patient can be included in CLAPSI surveillance as long as the patient is in patient admission. So if the patient is admitted to the hospital, dialysis patient can be included in the CLAPSI uh, surveillance because we are looking only for inpatient locations. Um, the location of attribution, if the, if the patient is admitted to one inpatient location and develop CLAPSI, of, of course, you will attribute this CLAPSI to the patient location where uh, it, he or she resides during uh, the diagnosis of CLAPSI. Uh, however, all, our, all outpatient location, including the ER, OR outpatient locations, uh, recovery rooms, the post anesthesia care unit, and so on, uh, we cannot attribute CLAPSI to outpatient locations because it's inpatient surveillance and no denominator, which is central line days collected from outside uh, outpatient clinic uh, or outpatient uh, uh, locations. Uh, there is an exception for the location of attribution where you can you should attribute the CLAPSI to the location where the patient resides during the diagnosis of CLAPSI, which is the transfer rule. So what is the transfer rule? The transfer rule is when the patient is moved from one inpatient location to another inpatient location or from outside uh, hospital to uh, one of uh, the inpatient uh, locations, uh, we attribute the uh, CLAPSI to the original location if the CLAPSI was diagnosed or the date of event is in the day of transfer or the day after. However, from the third day of transfer, transfer considering the day of transfer is day one, you should attribute the infection to the new location. And here is an example where the patient was with a central line in place is transferred from a medical ward to temporary care, to coronary care unit, CCU. After four days in the CCU with the central line is still in place, the CLAPSI event was met. So this is attributed to the new location, which is CCU, because it has four days best in uh, considering the day of transfer is day uh, one. Uh, however, if we change this uh, date of event to be on the first day, which is the day of transfer, in this case, you attribute the, uh, the CLAPSI event to the first location or transferring location, which is the medical uh, ward. It's very clear that if you if the date of event is on the day of transfer or the day after, it is attributed to the first location, otherwise it's attributed to the new location. What is the CLAPSI criteria, diagnostic criteria, which means when can we diagnose CLAPSI? We have three criteria to diagnose CLAPSI. The first one is called uh, LCBI1. Uh, um, and in, in the LCBI1, the patient is of any age and has recognized the pathogen, bacteria or fungi uh, uh, retrieved from one or more blood specimen using cultural and non-culture method and that organism is not uh, uh, related to an infection at another place. So you have a positive blood culture, a positive blood culture that is retrieved or uh, identified from one or more, one is enough, one or more blood specimen and the organism is recognized pathogen. What, what, what we mean by recognized pathogen? Any bacteria or fungi that are not included in the skin commensals. And we will we'll know about the skin commensals later. Criteria two or uh, LCBI criteria two, uh, here again, the patient is of any age and have a positive blood culture, but the organism is not a recognized pathogen, but other uh, wise it is a common commensal. In this case, two things will be added to the definition. First is the culture has to be uh, obtained from two or more blood specimen rather than one or more in the criteria one. And additionally, you should have some uh, symptoms, uh, one, at least one of these signs and symptoms, fever, chills, 
or hypotension which are the signs of septicemia as you know when the the blood is a clean fluid and once uh, organism bacteria or uh, or uh, bacteria or uh, fungi present in the blood this is bacteremia uh, and one of the best signs of bacteremia is uh, shock fever chills or hypotension uh, and, and if one of these signs plus the organism is obtained from two or more blood specimen then we call it uh, uh, criteria two which is concerned with uh, condenser and remember here we do not say culture or non-culture only culture method for skin condenser are allowed criteria three is basically is criteria two but only when the patient is in the first year of life so if the patient is less than or equal to one year uh, the only change in the criteria we change the symptoms of the uh, bacteremia from fever shells and hypotension to in, in in the first year of life uh, first year of life fever hypothermia apnea or bradycardia and you will see these symptoms repeated in different definition in HAI because in the first year of life usually kids respond to infection by either increase in the temperature above 38 or decrease in the temperature uh, below 36 and in, in, in the first one is called fever as adults and hypothermia hypothermia is very uncommon in, in adults or not used in adults in diagnosis of uh, uh, bacteremia uh, apnea uh, stopping of respiration bradycardia uh, slow heart rate it are, are also signs and symptoms of uh, um, eclapsy in, in uh, first year of life. These are some notes on uh, LCBI criteria. Uh, although it's, uh, the central line has to be uh, placed centrally as we said uh, close to the heart or one of the uh, or in one of the big vessels around the heart. Uh, still, the blood collected for LCBI criteria can be used from any location. As you know, blood is circulating all over the body. So collecting blood from central location or peripheral location or central line or peripheral line will be accepted fee, uh, for uh, meeting the LCBI criteria or CLABSI criteria. Uh, additionally, uh, criteria one uh, recognized pathogen is stronger than criteria two and three, which are skin commensals. Uh, why we consider LCBI 1 uh, stronger than 2 and 3? Because uh, these organisms, which is a recognized pathogen, are, uh, are not present usually in the blood. And their presence in the blood is definitely mean that the blood is contaminated with bacteria. Uh, but for the skin commensal, there is a possibility. It is a contamination while collecting the the blood specimen uh, because uh, they are present on the skin so once you if you if you don't collect the specimen with special precautions uh, you can easily say that this skin commensals are present in the blood while they are not present so if the patient has criteria one recognized pathogen and criteria two uh, skin commensal please report to the consider the diagnosis LCBI only report the stronger criteria which is recognized pathogen again if the patient is infant in the first year of life and has criteria one and three uh, uh, met also you report criteria one which is recognized pathogen and there is no possibility of contamination here as we said for the criteria two and three we have uh, positive blood culture with the skin commensal from two or more blood specimens so you have matching common commensal from the two specimens and remember that this criteria the two matching uh, skin commensals are one criteria which means the first one the first one of the two the date of the first one of the two uh, is considered the date of that criteria and you should consider this as the diagnostic test that you will uh, consider the or calculate the um, uh, infection window based on that uh, diagnostic test. Continuing the, uh, the notes about criteria two and three, we said we need two or more blood specimen drawn in separate occasion. And when we say uh, uh, this is uh, this this statement means that blood 
from at least two blood draws were collected on the same or consecutive days. What does it mean? It means that uh, uh, on the same day, separated by few minutes, fine. Separated by one hour, fine. On the other day, in the next day, fine. But with uh, one um, one intervening day, uh, like Monday uh, and Wednesday, we are not okay with this. So uh, at least one bottle from each draw. Usually, they they in each draw, right and left, for example, they collect two bottles uh, from uh, right and two bottles from left. Uh, because of the media using like Europe or non Europe or something like that. Uh, so at least one of the bottles on the right and one bottle on the left, if you if you are using right and left, uh, should draw the same uh, common commensal. What are the common commensals that you're talking about? Uh, it includes diphtheroids, bacillus, uh, bacterium, coagulase negative staph, and this is one of the most common ones, coagulase negative staph. You have to remember this. And another name for it is uh, staph epidermidis. Uh, very dense stripped, stripped uh, very dense. Again, the other name can be very dense stripped or stripped very dense. Uh, aerococcus, micrococcus, and rhodococcus. So the most common for these to see are coagulase negative, very dense, stripped, uh, and bacillus uh, uh, anthracis or bacillus species. Uh, when we say meeting separate occasion, what does it mean separate occasion? Separate occasion, different venipuncture, uh, uh, so from one arm uh, or two arms, a combination of venipuncture and lumen, so you, we can we are allowed to use the blood from the lumen of the catheter or separate access of the same site, such as two draws from a single lumen catheter separated by few minutes uh, um, or uh, two draws from two lumen catheters. So the catheter has two lumens and you take uh, one draw from one side and another draw from another side. So as a rule of thumb, as long as you have time it's been to make disinfection uh, or cleaning before you draw, this is sufficient for us to consider this as another separate occasion. Do we have to get uh, draws uh, from the catheter? Again, uh, it's allowed from the lumen of the catheter or from uh, peripheral venipuncture. So, but the thing that we are not uh, recommending take from the tip of the catheter because tip of catheter is usually a place of contamination uh, with the skin commensal. So uh, please do not use the tip of the catheter, but you can use the lumen of the catheter and the peripheral line or right and left. We are fine with all these uh, scenarios. Uh, when we say same common commensal or matching common commensal, we mean the name match. We don't mean the uh, resistance, for example, because a lot of people say we have two organisms, one is resistant and another is not resistant, are they still the same? Uh, basically, when we determine the sameness or the uh, matching of the organism, we're not looking for the resistance pattern, or we only look for the name of the genus and the species. The first name is called genus, and the second name is called the species or subcategory. So if, if both genus and species are uh, mentioned in the two sites, uh, we have to have the same genus and species. If one mentioned to the genus and the other mentioned to the genus and the species, it is fine for us, as long as the two match have the same genus. So this is like an exercise to look for the sameness of the, uh, or the matching of the organism. Bacillus species, Bacillus series, they are the same because uh, uh, Bacillus is the genus, series is the species. One is mentioned to the genus and the other mentioned to the species. So as long as the genus are the same, so they are the same. You can be used to criteria two and three. Again, coagulase negative staph and staph epidermis. As we said before, staph epidermis is another name for coagulase negative staph. So basically, these are exactly the same coagulase negative staph and can be used for criteria two and three. Coagulase negative staph and staph aureus, here they're making a trick for you. Uh, although they are called staph, staphylococcus, 
Uh, but coagulase negative staph is a different, completely different organism from staph aureus. Staph aureus is a pathogenic organism, a recognized path uh, uh, organism. But coagulase negative is an organism present in the skin, usually do not cause infection uh, unless it enter the blood or uh, in, in case of enter the blood become pathogenic, but usually on the skin has no uh, value. So coagulase negative staph is a completely different organism from staph aureus. And if you have both staph aureus and coagulase negative, you use criteria one because the staph is a recognized pathogen. Acinetobacter species and Acinetobacter bomani. Yes, they are matching organism, but both of them are pathogenic, so cannot be used to criteria two and three and used only in criteria one. Acinetobacter lufi, Acinetobacter bomani, they are different species and they are not matching, but again, Acinetobacter genus to begin with is not a skin commensal uh, it is a pathogenic organ uh, pathogenic organi recognized pathogen and so um, it is used only in criteria one continuing the notes about all criteria uh, ideally blood specimen should be obtained from two or four blood draws from separate uh, veiny puncture right and left for example veiny puncture or uh, not through uh, a vascular catheter. But if you use the lumen of the catheter, it's fine. These blood draws should be performed simultaneously if it's right and left or over a short time within a few minutes, the time that you use for cleaning the new site. Uh, a blood specimen may be consistent of a single bottle for pediatric uh, age because uh, of the limited amount of blood. So instead of two bottles, we use only one bottle in one side. But still, in pediatric, you still have two uh, or more blood draws to see the matching. Matching means you have two blood draws and you have two organisms and you make sure they are the same organism based on the name of genus and species. Criteria one and two may be used in any age. Criteria three is only age-specific criteria and it is used in one year or less of life, for infants only. For the CLAPSI updates, we have some topics. So these are the list of items that uh, included in the uh, general HAI uh, identification, uh, including CLAPSI, CAUTI, VAB. Uh, so th uh, the first thing is window. And we know that the window is seven days and it is demarcated. The middle of the window is demarcated by the diagnostic test and the diagnostic test here is the positive blood culture, either recognized pathogen or a skin commensal. And remember, a skin commensal, you need two blood uh, cultures. And if they are on the same day or consecutive day, you use the first one as the demarcation of the window. Date of event, as we said before, the date of event is the date of the first element meeting the criteria. And usually criteria one is only the only way, uh, uh, it's only one date of event, which is the date of recognized uh, pathogen. Uh, but in criteria two, you have two and three, you have symptoms. So uh, in two and three can be the positive blood culture or the symptom, which comes first will be the date of event. Present and admission means the B, BSI criteria uh, is met during the first day, two days of admission. And in this case, we cannot consider it CLAPSI because CLAPSI needs two things. Two, uh, CLAPSI needs, uh, HIA CLAPSI needs the uh, catheter bliss, present in bliss more than two days and the patient was admitted for more than two days. Starting from the third day, you can count the HAI. HI including transfer and multiple transfer. Again, we said in the transfer rule that uh, is um, uh, that you can attribute the infection CLAPSI to the primary location if the date of event is the day of transfer or the day after. 14 days repeat infection time frame. You cannot uh, diagnose another CLAPSI except after 14 days and any additional pathogen collected during this transfer, this 14 days will be added towards the first uh, uh, organ, uh, first eclipse. We don't want to change the date. Central line removal and, insert and reinsertion will have few slides later. Secondary BSI attribution period. We don't have secondary BSI after primary BSI. This is a rule of thumb. Pathogen assignment guidance. Again, if you collect any pathogen during the uh, repeated uh, infection time frame, you add it to the primary 
clepsy uh, 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 added to the primary clepsy or uh, pathogens. Use of non-culture methods only in criteria one. Criteria two and three, we cannot use uh, non-culture myth methods because it's difficult to identify uh, on ground. Uh, again, LSB cri LSBI criteria two and three are common commensal from two or more blood specimens that are collected on the same or consecutive days. Uh, only primary CLAPSI create PSI RIT but does not create uh, uh, secondary BSI attribution period and there is no secondary BSI after primary BSI. In case of central line and SBI criteria accompanied by the presence of extra corporeal life support, ECMO or VAD, ventricular assisted device, PSI not, uh, not CLEPSI can be diagnosed. So one of the criteria that you should delete the, uh, the CLEPSI diagnosis if it is accompanied by ECMO or VAD, which are other intravascular devices, not central line present, so you cannot attribute the infection to the claps to the central line because there is other vascular device in place. Uh, there is a list of uh, uh, organism uh, or intestinal organism that cannot be used for the purpose of clepsy, uh, but we will uh, diagnose another criteria of MBI. So we will talk about MBI later, but these are intestinal organisms if they are present only, and, and you have to underscore this word, the sole pathogen. So if you have cholesteridium deficit, for example, you and this is the only organism for CLEPSI, you cannot say this is CLEPSI uh, unless you verify MBI. And if MBI... Uh, um, uh, it seems to be true this is uh, then MBI 1 criteria 1 not CLEPSI 1 but if we have seen uh, Colostrum difficile plus Staph aureus now since Staph aureus is a recognized pathogen for CLEPSI criteria 1 so this is CLEPSI irrespective the MBI criteria uh, applies or not so Campylobacter uh, cholesterol difficile, enteropathogenic E. coli, and this is different from the regular E. coli, uh, Salmonella, Shigella, Listeria, Yersinia, Yersinia, and and all these are intestinal organisms, not not used uh, as acceptable only organism for clepsy. There is a list of organisms that are not allowed in diagnosis of clepsy or any other HAI because they are community associated fungal pathogen and they have long incubation periods. So if you see it even, it's very rare. You may stay 10, day, 10 years doing surveillance before you find one. And uh, even if you find it, it does not mean it was transferred in the hospital. Probably it's from the community, but because of the long incubation period, you consider it as uh, uh, HAI. So these are not acceptable organisms for being a uh, CLEPSI organism, uh, like plastomyces, histoplasma, and so on. Uh, organism not acceptable for CLEPSI. Also, we have a strept group B, streptoco streptococcus, uh, in an infant in the first six years of uh, six days of life, which means what? If a baby was just born and you diagnose uh, post plug culture with group B streptococci, we cannot diagnose uh, CLEPSI. It's a bloodstream infection, yes, but is it uh, associated with the catheter or, uh, or health care associated? No, because usually this organism can be caught from uh, the birth canal during the passage of the uh, baby. So in the first six days of life, we cannot diagnose CLEPSI. But again, is this an infection? Yes. Should we uh, create 14 days repeated infection time frame? Yes, but this is not a central line associated. Um, inclusion of the denominator, when you place the central line, this is day one. Uh, if it is placed on admission, so the central line admission date is the is the, the admission date is day one for central line access and and, and uh, counting. Um, what does it mean access and deaccess? 
Axis is defined as the line placement inserted of needle into the board and infusion withdrawal through the line. So axis means that you either insert, uh, sorry, insert or use the uh, line. What if the patient come to the hospital with the line already inserted? Do we consider this axis? No, uh, because now it is inserted outside. So it, until you use it, for its function infusion withdrawal or hemodynamic monitoring then you cannot say it's accessed and if it's not accessed this means that uh, you you don't count it at the central line disc the, so the if the patient is, is is transferred to the hospital with the central line the day one central line uh, is the day of access not the day of transfer or the first day of admission Deaccessing de the central line or a board is removal of the port needle, but port remains in place. Uh, but on the reverse of axis, so you don't consider this a central line day until it is accessed. Once it is accessed in the hospital, it is accessed throughout the admission. So if the patient is deaccessed, does not result in the patient removal from the collapse surveillance, nor the central line day is counting. So once the patient used the central line during admission, you cannot remove it from the central line surveillance even if the line is the axis. So this is there is a difference between axis and the axis. Axis you don't count unless it's axis. The axis even if it's the axis, it's you still count because you cannot remove the patient that used the central line in the hospital from the surveillance or from the central line days once it is axis during this admission. And this is a graph to show the access, the access process. Uh, central line removal and insertion. Again, if the uh, central line, sometimes they removed and replaced on the same day or the next day. So for the central line counting uh, purpose, if it is removed and, and replaced by another one on the same day or the next day, you continue counting as usual as if there is no removal and reinsertion habit. But if the removed and reinserted with one full calendar day without central line, then you start over. So you consider the previous one uh, as old one and you start a number one with the reinsertion since there is one full calendar day without central line. And, and this example showing you that the patient has the central line removed April 2 and reinserted again in April uh, three in this case you continue counting as usual so april 2 was its uh, central line day five you continue six seven and so on uh, but in, in in this example the patient removed the cent uh, april 2 but did not insert in april 3 but rather april uh, 4 reinserted again so there is april 3 which is a calendar day with no catheter inside now you start over and you stop day five central line day on april 2 and you start day one on april 4 uh, because one full calendar day without central line was present uh, other example we give you the example of ecmo or vad if ecmo or vad is present you cannot count the clepsy because clepsy here uh, uh, you cannot say it's central and associated because there is other intravascular devices. Also, if there is uh, inappropriate access of the device, uh, look at this example, a positive blood specimen meeting LCBI criteria that is accompanied by documentation. Documentation, look at the word documentation. So it is present documentation uh, of the observed or suspected patient accession. Uh, so here we have a central line inserted, we have a full criteria of LCBI met, but there is documentation that the patient was inappropriately accessing, accessing the line. Uh, and this is what documented in the patient chart and accessing here, maybe playing with the line, maybe inserting some drugs and drug addicts, for example, or, or went outside the hospital, go outside the hospital. Uh, get some medications or uh, uh, drugs or something like that. So once this is documented, we cannot consider this as a clepsy 
it is removed from the CLEPSI surveillance. But if there is infection, it's an infection, it's a bloodstream infection, we, we, we don't ignore that. It's a bacteremia, you can create uh, RIT, but it's not recorded as a CLEPSI. Uh, comes to the MBI criteria and uh, so for the LCBI criteria MBI um, we need two things first a certain specific type of patient and specific types of organism for the organism it has to be an intestinal organism for recognized pathogen there is a list of called intestinal pathogens for the commensal we have only uh, two, it, actually it was first one, very dense strept, uh, streptococci, and later they add a rothia uh, species. So for the type of patient, you have two types of patient. Either one is fine with us to call MBI. The first one is a patient who has allogenic hemobiotic stem cell transplant, uh, and then after transplant, he developed reaction to the transplant, which is called uh, gastrointestinal graft versus host disease, grade three and four of that reaction, which is the highest grade, uh, uh, has also mucosal barrier injury. So the intestine, the mucosa of the intestine become fragile and weak and can easily uh, uh, allow passage of uh, uh, intestinal pathogen that is usually does not cause any harm to the blood causing a septicemia with a intestinal organism. The other type of patients, which are neutropenic patients, usually uh, oncogenic patients, and these are uh, diagnosed by absolute neutropenic count, less than 5,000 cells per cubic millimeter. So this slide gives you the impression that you cannot go and find MBI unless the LCBI criteria of CLEPSI is or BSI is diagnosed. Remember, CLEPSI is LCBI plus, plus central line catheter. So you have first to diagnose BSI anyway in CLEPSI. So the same thing here, you cannot diagnose MBI except the BSI criteria one, two, or three are met. When they met and we find the organism is intestinal, either recognized pathogen or commensal, then we go and verify the type of patient and then confirm the MBI. So MBI, LCBI is a subset of LCBI, which is BSI. Therefore, a BSI event must fully, fully met before uh, LCBI criteria for MBI are evaluated. MBI date of event will always be the date of event of the original LCBI. So as if you diagnose BSI and now you confirm it's MBI, you still have the first date of LCBI as the date of MBI. There is no new date of MBI. Abnormal uh, 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 absolute neutropenic count or white blood cell count reflect the risk factor for acquiring MBI, not symptoms of infection and therefore uh, they are not determining the date of event uh, uh, for uh, MBI. So MBI date of event is basically the date of original LCBI uh, and uh, the presence of a neutropenic count is a risk factor of the patient, not a part of the criteria. So it's not used for determining the absolute neutropenic count uh, is not used for determining the date of event. As we said, the date of event is still the date of event of the original uh, uh, LCBI criteria. Uh, for the exact criteria of uh, MBI, we have MBI LCBI 1, MBI LCBI 2, MBI LCBI 3. Uh, it is exactly uh, the, 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 the first part of the criteria, as you see here, it is very similar to the original LCBI. So for one, it's any age, two, any age, three is age, first year of life. One uh, is at least one blood specimen and two and three, two matching blood specimen. One is only intestinal organism and we will give you the list of intestinal organisms that we care about. For L LCBI two and three MBI, we have only uh, very dense strep and rothia species. Uh, 
uh, for LCBI, cultural and cultural methods are allowed for LCBI 2 and 3, culture only is allowed. What is the new? The new is the type of patient. Here we have allogenic uh, hemobiotic stem tra uh, transplant over the last year. Uh, one of the following criteria define the grade 3 or 4 uh, graft versus host disease, which include uh, diarrhea. And usually diarrhea uh, means that more than one liter of diarrhea in one day, 24 hour, or uh, in uh, uh, young age in pediatric, it is uh, uh, more than 20, uh, equal to or more than 20 mil per kg in 24 hours in pediatric. So this means significant diarrhea. And remember that the significant diarrhea is a, a big sign of grade 3, 4 gastrointestinal graft versus host disease. So you can consider these two either or is the, the same one because uh, grade 3, 4 was a choosing because it has injury to the intestinal mucosa that allow passage of organism. And on the same time, this is manifested by diarrhea. The other type of patient, or, or here means either the, the, the whole document before, the whole sentence before, or the neutropenic patient. A neutropenic patient is defined as a patient who have absolute neutropenic count less than 500 cells per cubic mil that is collected within the window, which is a seven day window demarcated by the positive blood culture, which is recognized intestinal pathogen in criteria one and is and commensal in criteria two or three. This is the list of intestinal organisms, as you see, bacteroids, uh, candida, cholesteridium, enterococci, uh, Fusobacterium, Bictostreptococcus, Brovitella, and Velonella. Uh, and, and a big group is called Enterobacteria, and you know that Enterobacteria has many members. The most common of them, it's, it's much more than this list, but it's the most common of them uh, Citrobacter, Enterobacter, uh, E. coli, uh, Klebsiella, Proteus, Brovidentia, Salmonella, Serratia, Shigella, Yersina. Uh, remember that this is not the whole list of intestinal organisms, but it's much more bigger than this. Uh, I would say that the ones that you see here represent 98% of all organisms included in the intestinal organism. The other ones are very rare, but in, just in case if you have any organism and you are not sure this is intestinal organism or not, you have to go to the NHSN website. They have Excel file contain all the organism all the exact name of various names of the organism that's called intestinal organism or under the group of enterobacteria, which is a big group. So th this slide showed the MBI LCBI criteria uh, for neutropenia in three examples, patient A, patient B, and patient uh, C. Uh, and the uh, window is determined by the positive blood culture. And as you see, the MBI, uh, uh, LCBI, um, the, the, the absolute neutropenic count shouldn't be used to determine the window. The window is still um, determined by the positive blood culture as uh, BSI. The, the following the slides show you the different patients. As you see, the each row represents a patient. You have patient A, B, and C. For the patient A, he met the criteria one for LCBI because it has a candida species in the blood, and this is a recognized pathogen. And also, he has two days of uh, lower than 500 uh, absolute neutropenic count within the window, so it meets the criteria of neutropenia and LCBI criteria one. So this is considered MBI LCBI criteria one. For patient B, uh, you have here a positive blood culture with the streptoviridans to specimens, uh, plus uh, you have uh, neutropenia uh, blue 500 in five days two days before and three days after. So it's meeting the MBI LCBI criteria two, uh, sub criterion two. 
for the third patient uh, he has criteria one because he has positive uh, blood culture for candida species and he has two days of uh, 230 and 400 of lower than 500 absolute to win count after the date of event it's fine as long as it is within the uh, the window which is seven days demarcated by the blood culture most of blood culture of candida in the middle and three days after three days before and remember that the date of event is still the same the date of a positive blood culture with candida not the first or the second day for having the uh, neutropenic count Uh, this slide showed some notes uh, about the MBI-LCBI. Uh, when you, you read the, the word no other organism isolated uh, in case of MBI, uh, make sure there is no organism that meet the, the criteria for CLEPSI, like uh, Staph aureus for criteria 1 and Coagulase negative for criteria 2 and 3. If you have this organism, it is called other organism. Other organism means CLEPSI organism. And if you have this organism, it's not MBI anymore. And that's why if you detect one of these organisms, the, the, meaning the organism for CLEPSI, during the RIT of MBI, then you have to change MBI to CLEPSI because we cannot have MBI and CLEPSI on the same patient. And uh, similar to CLEPSI, if you have MBI 1 and 2, uh, you need to report 1 because 1 is the higher. This slide showed the uh, graft versus host disease stages. Uh, we have a stage 1, 2, 3, 4. And as you see, 1 involve only the skin, uh, 2 involve skin and, and, and liver. Uh, three, in addition to skin and liver, the patient start to have diarrhea, and in four, they have, uh, it, it is the severest form, and it has diarrhea uh, or pain uh, or illness. Uh, illness means the intestine is not moving. As you see, what we are interested in only grade three and four, but one and two, which involve the skin or the skin and liver, we are not uh, we are not in, involving this in, in the uh, MBI definition. Uh, for CLEPSI updates, uh, we, we have to talk about secondary BSI. Secondary BSI is not primary BSI and is not reported in a separate form. We have two scenarios for diagnosing secondary BSI. The first scenario, you have a primary infection um, and uh, blood specimen must contain at least one matching organism of the site-specific uh, uh, specimen. The site-specific specimen is collected during the infection window of that site. Uh, that site could be the bladder in urinary tract infection, could be the lung in uh, neum 1, 2, or 3, uh, and so on. Uh, and uh, neum two or three, sorry, uh, because neum one does not have a blood, uh, uh, respiratory specimen collected, and is uh, and on, on the same time you have a, a matching blood specimen collected during the secondary BSI attribution period, which is uh, overlap of both the window and RIT repeated infection uh, time frame, and. The organism identified from the site specific is collected during the window. The organism identified from the blood is collected during the BSI attribution period, and both are matching. In this case, this is the classic scenario for having secondary BSI. The second scenario is not the classic one. Here you have blood specimen collecting during the window. In the first scenario, blood specimen collected not only the window, but in the BSI attribution period to the primary infection where the primary infection site-specific specimen were collected during the window. Here, in the second scenario, both the site-specific, uh, uh, sorry, the blood specimen is collected during the window. And the blood specimen itself, the positive blood culture, is used toward the definition and is collected during the window. So the blood 
specimen is an element of the site specific criteria which means the the positive plug culture is part of the criteria and is collected during the window because it's part of the criteria and in this case you may have only positive plug culture without a matching uh, primary site culture and you still call it a uh, collapse uh, 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 sorry secondary b si This is scenario one for secondary BSI examples. And as you see, uh, the most common example is SSI. You have SSI any, uh, any uh, level, uh, superficial, deep, or organ. You have positive wound uh, for certain organism, and you have matching positive blood during the BSI attribution period. Uh, for uh, symptomatic UTI, another example of uh, uh, scenario one secondary BSI is positive urine sample during the window and matching positive blood during the BSI attribution period for uh, UTI. Uh, Neom 2, 3 or possible VAB in uh, VAE uh, module, uh, you have positive respiratory specimen during the window and matching positive uh, blood uh, uh, BSI during the BSI attribution period. And in the three examples, as you see, you have positive primary during the window. Uh, SSI, there is, one, there is no window, but positive primary during the window and a matching positive blood during the BSI attribution uh, period. Uh, this example to um, explain to you why the uh, secondary uh, uh, secondary BSI attribution period can be, be between 14 and 17 days. On the left uh, box, you have here, uh, 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 consider that the primary site of infection is pneumonia. You have the chest x-ray done on the day hospital 6, uh, so, and also the symptoms start on day 6. So here, day six, which is the X-ray, will determine the window, middle of the window, three days before, which is the yellow color, and three days after the yellow color, and the seven days is the window for the pneumonia. Now, the since the the B side attribution period is the overlap of the yellow color, either violet color, the violet color here represented the 14 days, uh, starting with the date of event uh, up to 14 days. Uh, which uh, you cannot diagnose another pneumonia during that time. If you combine the yellow color with the violet color, is this is the blue color. So the blue color starts from the hospital day number three up to the hospital day of 19. So it is complete 17 days. During that time, if you get a positive blood culture with the same organism as pneumonia, you can call this a secondary BSI. On the right side, another box, consider it also the pneumonia, pneumonia type two, for example, you have the X-ray done on the day six as before, and it demarcates the seven-day window. However, the symptoms start before the X-ray. Fever and cough, for example, start before the X-ray. And it starts on the day hospital three or hospitalization day number three. So the date of event comes, which comes first, we take it as a date of event. The date of event now is the first date of the uh, window. And as you see here, that since the RIT, which is the 14 days starting from the date of event, is exactly similar at the BSI attribution period because the yellow color is completely overlapping with the violet color. So you can have the BSI attribution period 14 days, 15 days, 16 days, 17 days, but not less than 14 days and not more than 17 days. During that time, if you have a matching positive plug culture, you should call it secondary BSI and not primary BSI. In this example, as you see, uh, you have a urine culture fever, a urine culture showing E. coli. So assuming this meeting, the definition of uh, UTI, you have a uh, few days later after the window uh, during the BSI attribution period, you have uh, a blood sample uh, that uh, show E. coli, which is the same organism as the urine. Of course, the the county will be reported as a prime uh, uh, county will be reported in a separate form and in the same form you report the secondary uh, 
BSI and the organism is still uh, E. coli. In this example, it is very similar to the previous example. So we know that this patient would have a symptomatic UTI on day four of hospitalization and secondary BSI. Uh, and this is reported on the same form of uh, CAUT or UTI. However, we here get during the RIT period, we get another organism from the urine. It's not from the blood, it's Staph aureus. So what should we do with this Staph aureus? Should we call it uh, because it's more than 10, uh, 100,000 CFU per mil. Can we consider this another UTI? No. Why? Because it's happened within the 14 days RIT that start with the date of event of the first event. So the only thing that you need to do is to add this staph aureus to the county event which has E. coli. So the, for the symptomatic UTI form, you add in the organism E. coli and staph aureus and you add for the secondary BSI, yes, and it is E. coli. Uh, in the scenario two for uh, uh, secondary BSI, uh, you have the following criteria. Uh, blood specimen should be an element of the site-specific criterion. So the definition contain uh, one item about the blood uh, positivity and is collected during the site-specific infection uh, window, and the organism identified in the blood is an element uh, that is used to the site-specific criteria. So the definition has blood. The definition has one item that is blood, and the blood collection during the window. And the, org the organism identified in the blood is an element used to meet the criteria for that infection. Uh, scenario two for uh, secondary BSI, you have here uh, three examples. Uh, you have intra-abdominal infection. Uh, uh, let's read the, the intra-abdominal infection, which is the uh, deepest uh, organ SSI criteria. Uh, you have fever, nausea, abdominal pain, positive blood specimen during the window, and CT scan showing infection in the abdominal cavity. And as you see, it meeting the, the second scenario for secondary BSI because positive uh, blood specimen uh, is part of the definition and it's used for meeting the criteria and it is uh, during the window. Uh, for uh, new two and three, uh, either with one criteria during the window or two criteria during the window, uh, for example, here in the one criteria, you have uh, signs of uh, pneumonia, infiltrate on chest X-ray, fever, new onset uh, of cough, and the organism identified from the blood. So since uh, blood is used, uh, part of the definition is used to order the criteria collected during the window, so it is meeting the uh, scen uh, scenario two for secondary BSI. Uh, another uh, example for pneumonia, uh, two and three only. And remember, two and three uh, is not clinical pneumonia. It's lab-confirmed uh, pneumonia. But here, lab-confirmed pneumonia using two criteria. It is, is exactly the same example above, but instead of uh, only blood specimen, uh, you have blood and uh, respiratory specimen uh, meeting the criteria for uh, neum two and three, which is lab-confirmed criteria. This is the CLAPSI analysis, um, like quick note about the CLAPSI analysis. Uh, for the rate, we divide CLAPSI events by central line days uh, times this in 1000. So the output will be, uh, for example, two CLAPSI per 1000 central line days. Uh, the same thing uh, in MBI, just remove CLAPSI events and both MBI events. And remember, you cannot have MBI and, S uh, and CLAPSI on the same patient. You do stratification for this. We calculate this rate for different units, for, for weight groups of new units. You have five weight groups for uh, different, type cathet of cath different types of catheter, uh, like temporary or permanent catheter in a specialty uh, care area, our special care area, like uh, oncology, transplant, and so on. Uh, CLEPSI-SIR, here we have 
observed collapse events over expected collapse events. The observed collapse events is the number of events detected during the surveillance expected is calculated from uh, standardized population uh, reports like uh, NHSN reports or uh, Ministry of Health reports. And when you uh, cal uh, when you calculate the expected or predicted number of collapse, you should uh, times the number of central line days with the uh, rate uh, in NHSN or uh, Ministry of Health or any other standard population. And we do not do this uh, SIR for CLEPSI or for any other SIR unless the number of expected uh, events is uh, at least one or more. Because there is small units with only a few bits, when you calculate the expected number, it becomes 0.5, for example. So we cannot calculate the SIR unless the expected number is one or more. Uh, here we have MBI, LCBI, SIR. It is the same as uh, collapse SIR. So the observed MBI over expected MBI. And we calculate the expected MI in the same way, central line days times the MBI rate in the standard population. The central line utilization is uh, calculated by dividing the central line days over the patient days. And it is stratified at the collapse rate. And, and the central line utilization represents how much days out of the patient days uh, the patient stay in the unit have central line inserted. So what is the percentage of insertion uh, a central line out of all the patient days spent in the unit? Central line standardized utilization ratio, it is calculated by dividing observed central line days over expected central line days. And through this, you can compare the utilization ratio in your unit compared to the benchmark. And again, the interpretation the same. One means it's similar, above one means you are higher, lower than one, you are lower. Thanks for listening to this surveillance lecture. Uh, CLAPSI surveillance is one of the most important uh, surveillance lectures.